Welcome to lesson one of module four on DBMS extensions and example data warehouses. I'm going to start with a background question about the inventory data warehouse that you will use in assignments in modules two, three, and four. What is the origin of the inventory data warehouse design? Lesson four reviews basic concepts from course two. Lesson four presents table design or schema patterns that are typically used for data warehouse designs. You will review three schema patterns for data cubes from course two and see these patterns for the data warehouses used in practice problems and graded assignments in later modules. You have three learning objectives in this lesson. You should review schema patterns for data warehouses as preparation for query formulation skills covered in modules two, three, and four. To prepare you for the ungraded exercises and graded assignments in these modules, you should study the table designs for the store sales data warehouse in the inventory data warehouse. The traditional schema pattern for a data warehouse is known as a star schema consisting of one fact entity type or table surrounded by the dimension entity types or tables in one-to-many relationships. The star schema represents a single data cube. This ERD consists of four dimension entity types, item, customer, store, and time dim, along with one transaction fact entity type called sales. When converted to a table design, the sales table is foreign keys to each dimension table, item, customer, store, and time dim. In some designs, the fact entity type depends on the related dimension entity types for its primary key. Since fact tables can have many relationships, it is generally preferred to have an artificial identifier rather than a large combined primary key. In this example, sales number is an artificial identifier for the sales entity type. The previous star schema only represents a data cube for sales tracking. Additional star schemas may be required for data cubes involving other types of sales, inventory, and shipping. For related business processes that share some of the dimensions, a star schema can be extended into a constellation schema with multiple fact entity types. This constellation ERD diagram contains two fact entity types, sales and inventory, along with five dimension entity types shared among the fact entity types. The constellation pattern is important because it shows shared dimensions to represent multiple data cubes. A data warehouse for medium-sized business may have many data cubes. The previous constellation schema can be extended for additional dimensions and facts. However, the constellation schema can be too difficult to display on a page. This diagram provides an overview of a more complex schema diagram for a retail firm with both store sales and online subscription sales. Lead, package, and format are new dimensions. For a complex constellation diagram, a matrix provides a convenient mapping of dimensions and facts. This matrix shows a mapping of the simplified schema diagram shown previously. Item and time dim are shared in all three schemas. Most dimensions appear in two schemas. Shared dimensions are conformed or standardized across schemas. Supplier and store are used in only one schema each. Even a matrix becomes unwieldy for a moderate-sized data warehouse. A moderate-sized data warehouse can have 10 facts and 30-plus dimensions, making the matrix too large to show on a standard page. The matrix can be partitioned to display on several pages or zoomed from a high level with dimensions and facts grouped. A snowflake schema has multiple levels of dimension entity types related to one or more fact entity types. In this ERD, the store dimension has been split into two entity types, store and division, along with a one-to-many relationship from division to store. You should consider the snowflake schema instead of the star schema for small dimension tables that are not fully normalized. The store table in the previously shown star schema is not fully normalized because division ID determines division name and division manager. Since the store table is relatively small, query performance will not suffer much with the need to join the division table in a snowflake design. For large dimension tables, such as customer, however, query performance may suffer with extra join operations required in a snowflake design. If you completed course two, you should be familiar with the store sales data warehouse. You use this data warehouse in the guided tutorial for Pintaho data integration presented in module five. Each table has the SS prefix to avoid conflicts with other table names in an Oracle schema. 
The store sales data warehouse is used for the practice problems in modules two, three, and four. The store sales data warehouse corresponds to the snowflake schema previously shown. This Oracle relational database diagram has foreign keys instead of named relationships. All foreign keys are required, matching the mandatory relationships in the ERD. The inventory data warehouse supports business intelligence about inventory cycles. Inventory, bought, sold, consumed, and produced is the heart of any manufacturing or distribution company. Inventory transactions are frequent and common. The volume and significance of inventory transactions makes them important in a data warehouse design. The work order, sales, and purchase life cycles affect the perpetual inventory balance as shown in this diagram. In addition, inventory transactions including adjustments, transfers, issues, and reclassifications affect the perpetual inventory balance. You will use the inventory data warehouse for assignments in modules two, three, and four. If you completed the assignment in module five of course two, you should be already familiar with the inventory data warehouse. The fact table, inventory fact, contains several measures along with relationships to associated dimension tables. Several dimension tables are directly related to the inventory fact table. Other dimension tables, such as item cat code one, are indirectly related to the inventory fact table in a snowflake design. The snowflake schema design provides a template that can be customized to individual organizations. Dimension tables such as address cat code one allow an organization to customize the design to specific requirements. Data generation procedures create reasonable sized tables for more realistic usage of the inventory data warehouse and assignments. Before starting on assignments in modules two, three, and four, you need to create and populate the inventory data warehouse tables. The course website contains files with the create table and insert statements for each table, so you do not need to use the data generation procedures. Lesson four reviewed your background about schema patterns from course two and presented data warehouses used in practice problems and graded assignments. You reviewed three schema patterns, the star schema, constellation schema, and snowflake schema, and learned about representations for large schemas. This lesson also presented table designs for the store sales data warehouse used in practice problems and the inventory data warehouse used in graded assignments. You will use both data warehouses in modules two, three, and four. In answer to the opening question, the inventory data warehouse was created by a former database student for an independent study project. The former student had a strong background about inventory transaction cycles through his work with the One World product of the former J.D. Edwards, now powered of Oracle. The Oracle product, known as J.D. Edwards Enterprise One, contains more than 80 application modules to support industry solutions for manufacturing, packaged goods, and project services.